I went on America's Got Talent and got kicked off the show. Mm -hmm. They told me I'd never make it as a performer. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing YouTube, and then everything took off. And when your passion is what you do for a living, it's very hard to not become a workaholic. You know, if, you, if you're not happy with the person you are today, I 100% I believe that you can change. She's an American violinist, singer, songwriter, composer, and performing artist. Her music video, Crystallized, was the eighth most watched video in 2012. As of July 2016, her YouTube channel has over 8 million subscribers and over a billion views. She's Lindsay Sterling, and here's my take on her top 10 rules for success. Rule number two is my personal favorite. I make sure to stick around all the way to the end for some special bonus clips. And as always, as Lindsay's talking, if she says something that really resonates with you, please leave it in the comments below, put quotes around it so other people can be inspired as well. Enjoy! Well, I think honestly being true to yourself is the absolute key to being successful in this kind of a model um, because that, you can't fake authenticity, you can't fake loving something and honestly to any, I think any artistic form or medium you have to work so hard to get you know get your stuff heard or seen and so if you don't absolutely love it you will burn yourself out and the only way I'm able to do what I do is you know I'm almost a workaholic because I love what I'm doing mm -hmm. and it's okay like I because I'm enjoying it, because I love the people that I work with, it's, you know, it doubles as work and recreation, and if I didn't love it, it would be impossible. I went on America's Got Talent and got kicked off the show. Mm -hmm. They told me I'd never make it as a performer. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing YouTube, and then everything took off. And so to be able, you know, to be invited back to one of the biggest shows in America, mm -hmm. and a show that I got kicked off of, and then to be mm -hmm. invited back, it was a really cool experience, just because um, a lot of people don't get the chance to redo a moment of their life that was very devastating. And to be able to go back on that stage and do it the way I wanted to do it, mm -hmm. and to be able to give the performance I wanted it was really awesome. I mean, there were also critics on on the show. Um, the judges were not always nice with you. Right? Was it like Judgment Day where you felt like, "Ha ha, I'm back!" And this time, I'm a star. <laughs> you know, kind of. It was, and I I hope that my fans and other people saw it that way in a way of like, you know, you can't let anyone else tell you who you are and how mm -hmm. good you are because mm -hmm. everyone has their own opinions. But the, I hope that they see that. Wow, the same way Lindsay didn't listen to them and she went back and was able to prove them wrong. Like mm -hmm. I can do that. Like if someone. Mm -hmm. When at school is mean to me, it doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean I'm a dork or a loser. Mm -hmm. You know, I can I can become whoever I want to be. And I hope that people see that because that moment proved that to me, you know, and it's it's true. I wish um okay. so when I first started, I wish I had realized that um people were the most important thing to me. Because there was a time, you know, I I'm such a hard worker, and when your passion is what you do for a living. It's very hard to not become a workaholic. And uh, there was a time when I just almost lost sight of everything that was most important to me because I was working so hard and I was pushing so hard for these, these dreams and these goals and everything I wanted in life. And my life started to look very gray and colorless. And I just, I realized I had lost a lot of depth because I wasn't making time for those most important things, which are my family, and, you know, the people in my life or someone that maybe needed me at a time, but I was too busy to even notice. And those are the things that you can't, you can't fulfill your full passion, whether it's through music or art or dance, if you've lost sight of the things that make you a real person. And I had to like refine myself almost like, wow, what is it that makes me me? And once I refound that, it's like everything else came together again. I was able to write again. I was able to create. But without those things, then you lose sight of everything. I think like you said, I, every single artist goes through that. Like, uh, And I think a lot of times you think that uh, the great writers are the people, they just write hit after hit after hit. And they do, but it's also because they get through all the terrible songs first. And I mean, I think that's kind of every single artist story. And uh, and I, I mean, I love to tell when people ask, what's your best advice for, you know, an upcoming musician or anybody, I think. It's that you have to be able to rise from the failures is mm -hmm. what makes a successful person because everybody's going to have mishaps. They're going to fall down. And it's, you know, the people that continuously pick themselves up that are the ones that are going to find their voice, make it, whatever you want to call it.
I love how for this record you had fans actually do little videos and they talked about what they were brave enough to do in life. So for you, what was the moment you realized you were brave enough to kind of just do this full time and just go right after your passion? Ooh, um, you know, I think it's once I discovered YouTube. I mean, I, I had already been going for it with full force, you know, and uh, but I was kind of wondering if I had what it took to make it. And I was really discouraged at times because everywhere I went, I just kept being told like, no, you're not good enough. Yeah. Like you, you know, and that could be really discouraging. And so even though I was going for it, I was kind of like in the back of my mind, just really scared. Like, am I going to make it? I don't know. And, and then when I just dis finally discovered YouTube um, and I put up my first video, I just felt so empowered and so excited because I was like, whoa, <laughs> finally something's working. And that's when I was like, I'm going to, you know, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm, I'm going to chase this with everything I've got. And that's when I was like, boom. And what about the appreciation of, of hip hop and EDM, which both have played a, a role in what, in what you do musically? Where, when, did you, when did you first encounter those and how did you come to love them? Um... You know, I really fell in love with EDM when I first heard, you know, well, I mean, I always liked like techno music. I felt like it was kind of, for lack of a better term, it was like great white girl dance music. <laughs> I've always loved to dance and I was like, oh, these beats, I can dance to this. There's like, it's not quite as like, doesn't need as much groove as like hip hop did. So that's why I always liked EDM. And then I really fell in love with it when I discovered Skrillex, especially Bangarang. That song, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to figure out how I can pair the violin with this weird dubstep stuff because it was so fun and it made me want to move um, and that was the beginning. You know it never becomes I don't think it'll ever be like oh I don't care I don't right. care anymore because I do <laughs> care it's my art it's my love it's my passion yeah. and you know certain comments you're able to like oh whatever but there's some comments that get you in the place that you're a little bit vulnerable. They trigger you. They trigger you. They you're get like, you. Oh. oh, you're like, don't talk about that. That's actually something that I care about. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, and I'm sensitive to. Yeah. And so I think it's so important to realize that, especially like in YouTube, there is so much good, but for some reason, it's easier to focus on the negative because it just yes. it gets you so much more. Um, you get thousands of positive comments, and right? Then like and they 10 see negative, and one like, negative, oh. and you're like, oh. Dang it, you know. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's so true that you only really do have one stage in your mind that you can mm. really focus on at one time. And so the good, the bad, they're going to come. And yeah. it's, what are you going to focus on? Am I going to, like, sit and stew and, like, respond? Especially responding. Like, if you it's respond the worst, to the right? negative, that is a lot of times the one that you want to respond to. <laughs> but it's like, or am I going to feed the good? Like, mm. am I going to feed the, these people who keep coming back and telling me really nice things? Like, yeah. That's where I should put my energy. That's where I should put my thoughts and focus. And it does take a lot of, like, you know, uh, concentration to do that. Yeah, and awareness, too. Awareness. Yes. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, but I think that's the key is just there's good and bad all around us right. everywhere and trying really hard to focus on the good and let that feed you. You know, every tour I like to try to like step it up. I want my fans that have, you know, a lot of my fans come to multiple shows. And so I always want them to be surprised when they come back. I don't want it to feel like the last Lindsey Sterling show, you know, and like, oh, well, you know, been there, done that. So I always try to do something that I've never done before. And um, this tour is a lot of fun. There's some new, you know, tricks I have up my sleeve that I, you know, I worked really hard to learn and to master these, these new skills. But um, anyways super excited about it. I think the courage uh, to be really open about those, you know, some of the things I've been through in the past all comes from experiencing those things. And when I was going through, say, you know, when I was going through some of these things, I felt so alone. And a lot of girls or people do, you feel like nobody can understand you because a lot of these problems deal with like isolating yourself and feeling alone. And one of the things that really helped me have the courage to change was that I realized that I'm not alone. Like there's actually people who understand me and there's people who have actually overcome this and they gave me hope. And so that's why I really strive to give a positive message of hope about like, you know, if, you, if you're not happy with the person you are today, I 100% I believe that you can change. And um, so that's what I like to hopefully share with young girls. And I would say that's what gave me the courage to, to share. Well, I've always played the violin ever since I was six years old. I begged for lessons and I've always played. And uh, it was actually when I was in college that I kind of just realized one day that I didn't love it anymore and I used to love it. And I specifically didn't study music in school because I didn't ever want to have the love of my music beat out of me. And so it kind of broke my heart when I was like, I don't even enjoy this anymore. 
And so I started thinking, okay, what can I do to like invigorate my passion? Like I started playing with bands. I started um, just anywhere I could go to kind of try out new styles of music. And uh, I've always loved electronic music and it just hit me one day. I need to play and write the kind of music that I am loving right now. And so I did and it just brought it back to life for me. It made it so creative and I became a creator, not just a musician. And that's I think what just invigorated my passion. Thank you guys so much for watching. I made this video because John Thorne asked me to. So if there's a famous entrepreneur that you want me to profile next, leave it down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'd also love to know what did Lindsay say that had the biggest impact on you? Which rule did you enjoy the most? What are you gonna take from her message to immediately apply to your life or business? Please leave it in the comments and I'm gonna join in the discussion. Finally, I want to give a quick shout out to Steph Reverone. Steph, thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and sending in that picture of you at the cafe reading it. I hope you're enjoying it and getting a lot of value from it. So thank you guys again for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. The same way kids look up to like Taylor Swift and they want to, you know, get a little guitar and be Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. My parents used to take me to orchestra concerts. And so that was my version of a rock star. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get one of those wooden things. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I played classical violin all growing up and I started to just, I had gotten burnt out and I wanted to love it again. And so I started experimenting with all different sorts of music. And um, I found out that I absolutely loved EDM and electronic dance and dubstep music. And, um, Nobody, no record labels thought I was worthwhile or that my project was marketable. And so I started doing it myself on YouTube. Um, and that's when it just kind of, whoa, I guess it is marketable is yeah. what I kind of discovered. I guess I surround my, like my crew, my tour crew, I surround myself with really great people. I have the best tour crew. And so they kind of, I mean, honestly, just say one day I wanted to be crazy and like went out and got drunk. They would all just be like, whoa like they would be so turned off that they would just be like what are you doing they'd probably like take the beer out of my hand and be like come here Lindsay like what's wrong with you because they know me so well and they just they're there to protect me and help me as well I wasn't like I have always been a very optimistic upbeat person when I first came to college it was a time that I was trying to figure out who am I <laughs> what makes me special and I started to find most of my value in the fact that I was thin for several years I had no idea I had become anorexic and be places with people I cared about but what I was thinking about was the extra grease on the pizza or the calories that I knew were in that shake and I just was talking to my mom one day and I broke down crying because I realized for the first time that I had a problem and that this isn't normal people don't think like this I finally realized I wasn't happy anytime there's a change to be made you have to realize that there's somewhere else you want to be. And I wanted basically to be happy. That was far more important than being the skinniest girl in a room. Once I realized that there was a problem, that's when I could change. I knew that I could be happy again.